What's up guys, it's the Cheapster here back with another video. And guys, do you know what time of the year it is? It is everybody's favorite time of the year, tax time. So taxes are almost due for the year and if you're a delivery driver or a rideshare driver for companies like Grubhub, DoorDash, Instacart, or Uber, hopefully you've been tracking your business miles. And I know there can be many gray areas to what miles count as business miles and which ones count as personal. And you might be hearing these terms like standard mileage deduction or actual expense deduction. And you might not know which method that you should be using. And the truth is, is for delivery drivers and rideshare drivers, tracking your miles and knowing how to use them to get the most tax deduction at tax time is actually pretty simple, as long as you know the rules. And of course that's the case, because with all taxes it's always simple. Because everybody knows the IRS catchphrase of, it's as easy as one, two, give me your money. So I'll explain in this video why it's important to track your miles, what miles you can count as business, and some methods that you can use to best track your miles. And guys, let me be honest, I've actually been putting this video off because I'm not a tax expert, and this video is just amateur advice from what I've been able to gather and it should be taken like that. But I have done my best to research and find the correct information for you, but I would always recommend that you do your own research yourself as well. Also before I start, let me say if you would like to download a mileage tracking app like Hurdler, the one I'm going to recommend in this video, then check my description for referral links to sign up and I would really appreciate that. So getting started with why is it so important to track your miles? So the obvious answer there is for the money saving tax deductions you'll get with your mileage. Your business mileage tracking is so important because it will most likely be your biggest business deduction on your taxes. So chances are as a gig work delivery driver, you'll most likely be using the standard mileage deduction, not the actual expense deduction. If you're wanting to use the actual expense method, I would recommend talking to an accountant because that gets a lot more confusing. But most likely anyway, the best method that you'll want to use is the standard mileage deduction. And you're in luck because the standard mileage deduction is much easier to use and much easier to understand. So currently in 2021, the standard mileage deduction gives you 56 cents per business mile you drive as a tax deduction. And that's down from 57.5 cents last year. So as a rough average, every business mile you track will save you about 16 cents in actual costs that you would have to pay on your taxes. And that could be even higher depending upon your state and your income bracket. So you can see as a rough estimate, tracking about 100 business miles will save you about $16 in real costs that you would have to pay off your taxes. And that can really add up quick over a year in lost savings if you don't track it, especially with how many business miles delivery drivers like us drive. So side note here, you may be doing the math in your head thinking, well, if I made 30,000 this year, then if I just say I drove 53,000 571.4286 miles, that's some really impressive head math by the way, that I won't owe anything in taxes. <laughs> Don't do this. This is a for sure way to get yourself audited, which will not be a fun experience and will for sure lead to you paying hefty fines on top of the tax you already owe and could possibly even end you up in prison. So just making up mileage to get out of paying taxes is a very bad idea. So do not do this. So now that you know what might happen in the case of an audit, you might be wanting to take this mileage tracking thing more serious than ever. And let me just say you don't need to be scared about this if you're honestly tracking your miles and trying to do it correctly. Even if you did make a mistake, in most cases, the IRS is not going to haul you off to jail if they can see that you were honestly trying to track it correctly and just mixed up a few things. Oh uh, yeah, looks like you claimed two extra miles here than you should have back in July. Oh yeah, I must have just mixed up the thing. That's it, you're going away for a long time, bucko. Wait, no, I have a YouTube channel to run. So keeping a simple log to show the IRS in case of an audit will protect you from fines and imprisonment as long as it's done correctly. Also, not to mention tracking your miles can help you personally understand your earnings and profit. It's a good idea to weigh the cost of the offers you take to the miles you have to drive to get a good understanding of which orders were better to take to help you make the most profit. This can also help you estimate your actual profit better so that you can account for gas costs and wear and tear on your vehicle. An important side note here is that you also need to know your personal miles driven throughout the year as well as your total miles driven throughout the year. The easiest way to do this is just to check your odometer reading at the beginning of the year and then check it at the end and take the difference for the total. Then once you have the total, just make sure you track all your business miles and subtract that from the total to get your personal miles. You don't need to worry about tracking all your personal miles as long as you make sure that you track all your business miles and get the total miles driven throughout the year. So now that you know why it's important to track your business miles as a delivery driver or ride share, let's get into what you can count as business miles and what you can't. So this could get a little bit confusing, but let me first start off with what miles for sure count as business miles for tax deductions. So anytime that you have the food or item or passenger in your car and you're driving 
the food or the person to their destination for sure counts as a business mile. And that's assuming you aren't running any weird personal errands along the way. So second, anytime that you receive an order or a pickup and you're driving to go pick up the food, the order or the person, that is definitely considered business mileage. Again, and this is always the case, that's assuming that there's no weird personal errands you're running. So third, anytime that you are driving between orders or pickups, but, and this is the important part, you have to still be active and willing to pick up orders, that would all count as business mileage as well. So that is it for what for sure can be claimed as business miles. So let's get into what for sure can't be claimed as business miles. So first off, anytime that you're driving a personal trip or running a personal errand cannot be claimed as business miles. Second, any miles that you drive not active on a delivery or rideshare app or not willing to take deliveries or pickups, that cannot be claimed as business miles. So that is pretty much it for what is for sure that we know and the rest is a little bit of a gray area. So you may have noticed I haven't talked yet about driving at the start of turning on or at the end of turning off. And that's because these areas aren't as simple as the others. So the IRS likes to use the words purpose and intent. One basic thing that you can usually ask yourself is was my driving for the purpose and intent of doing business? And if yes, it usually will be business mileage you can track. A more simple gray area that we can get out of the way here is that any time that you decide to go run a personal errand, whether you're active or not, cannot be counted as business miles. So if you're out working and you decide between orders, you wanna to go to McDonald's and get 100 spicy McNuggets to try to eat yourself, that drive between where you were and to McDonald's would not count as business miles. So the one main gray area that causes confusion that I would say I myself didn't even completely know until doing this video is that say you like to work in an area five miles away. So you drive to that area and then you turn on the app to take some orders. That mileage that you drove before you turned on the app would be considered commuting. And commuting does not count as business miles. And the reason here is like what I said before, when you left, you were not active and willing to accept orders, so those miles cannot be counted as business miles. The purpose and intent for those five miles was not to do business. Now in that same scenario, if you turned on the app at home before you drove the five miles and you were willing and able to accept any good order that might come in during that time, that would be considered business mileage. But of course, how the IRS would know the difference between the two in an audit would be pretty tricky, but it is always best to play it safe and just follow the rules. So this same gray area issue applies to when you're coming home from working. If you quit being active on the app, or if your shift ends so you're unable to take more orders as you drive home, you will not be able to claim those miles as business miles. But if you are still active and willing and able to accept a good order that might come in that you would normally accept on your drive home, then those can be counted as business miles. Now, in my opinion, I don't see it as very fair that if an order takes you way out right when your shift ends and you have to come back all those miles to go home, that those miles won't count as business miles. But unfortunately, those are the rules. So now that you can see see how this all works. This may help you better understand all those miles you drive out delivering, how you can make those all become business miles. So one trick you can do is always make sure you are on and active and willing to take orders whenever you leave your house and on the way home. Now this might not always be possible because your shift might end or you may have to drive to an area to even start your shift or you may have to leave your delivery region either coming or going from home. But a way to get around this is to be signed up for another delivery app that you could turn on and work to claim miles for that business. I've actually done this myself a few times with Grubhub when it's taking me out far for an order that is around market close at 10 p.m. I can then turn on DoorDash on my drive back and pick up some orders along the way back home. Of course, you do need to make sure though that you track those business miles for each individual business you drive for. Meaning maybe I drove 60 miles with Grubhub that day, but then I also drove 15 miles with DoorDash. All right, so now that you understand why it is important to track your miles and what miles you can track, let's get into the best apps and methods for tracking your business miles. So basically, tracking your business miles, you have two ways you can do it. You can either do it manually or you can do it semi-automatically. So manually is simply just tracking your miles on piece of paper or tracking them in an Excel document or something like that. And semi-automatically is using an app that will sense when you're driving and it will track all the trips that you take so you can divide them up into business and personal later. So the manual method is actually the method that I use because I find it the easiest just to track all my miles manually on a Google sheet so that I can access it from everywhere. And because I work for multiple companies, so it gives me columns for each business that I drive for. But I will say after doing this video and looking into different apps, I've actually found the app Hurdler to be the the best option for tracking miles. And that's actually what I'm gonna end up switching over to now. So I will talk more about that app in a minute. So the reason I like manual tracking is just because it gives me more control over tracking the miles. So I know that everything got tracked. Assuming I don't miss any miles, which 
definitely could be easy to do. I also find the manual method easier for tracking different miles for all the companies I work for, especially if I work for more than one app throughout the day. So when I get to the end of the day, I'm not confused on what app that trip was for. And the other positive I have about the manual way is that it doesn't use more battery and data like the semi-automatic way does. The semi-automatic way uses more battery and data because it's always on in the background tracking your GPS. And that's not a huge issue, but for somebody who's using multiple apps and having them track my GPS also, my battery life can go down pretty quickly. But I do have my phone plugged into the car most of the time, so like I said, it's not a huge issue and that's not the main reason I use the manual method. And the semi-automatic method is definitely very popular for people, especially people who may have trouble tracking manually and will forget stuff, or people who just don't want to track the manual way. And a benefit of the semi-automatic way is it will be more specific with your trips because it will have the GPS coordinates of the trips you drove. But just to let you know, you don't need to track every single trip throughout the day individually, unless they're between different apps. But a good rule of thumb is to at least have a daily log of the miles you drove. So two great apps that you can use for free semi-automatic tracking and actually manual tracking also are Hurdler and Stride. Both of these apps are really great free apps that both do semi-automatic tracking and manual tracking. And they can also do some tax estimating for you, which could be very beneficial. But in my opinion, I would recommend Hurdler because I think it has the best options for people working for multiple companies. And I just really like the flow of the app. I think it works well. And another side note, if you run other businesses outside of doing delivery apps, you can also track it there and they can also help with some expense and income tracking. And another reason I recommend it is because their premium account, which offers other business tools and other tracking things could actually be pretty beneficial to you. And even though the premium costs money, it's honestly a really good price for what it offers. So to be honest, I've seen Hurdler in the past and even talked about it a little bit in another video, but I just kind of forgot about it, never looked into it more. And I honestly feel pretty stupid that I never used it because it's really going to save me a lot of time and it's going to be so helpful to tracking my miles. So if you do want to sign up for either one of those, I'd appreciate if you use my link down below in the description to sign up. That helps out the channel and it helps me make more videos like this. Missing miles will cost you a lot of savings in the end. So whatever method I mentioned here that helps you track the best is the method you should use. Again, this is my unprofessional opinion and I am not an accountant or tax professional. So you should research for yourself to make sure the information is correct for your situation. I always try to make sure all my information is correct and accurate, but just as a rule of thumb, you should never take full advice without researching farther from randos on the internet like me, especially when it comes to the big bad IRS coming knocking at your door. Well, they usually send a letter first, but you get the point. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope this was helpful. This was a big topic to cover, but hopefully you feel pretty confident now in what miles you can count as business miles and ways that you can track those. If you have any other questions, you can leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to see if I can answer it. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, go ahead and do the cheapest thing you can today. Tap that like button. Also subscribe to the channel. Look at how fast we are going around that track. And I will see you guys in the next video. And remember, stay cheap. That's cheap. You still haven't subscribed? Oh my god.